For several millennia, the subject of religion has proven many times to be the center of controversy and conjecture since its existence. Religion serves as an explanation for phenomena that humans can't explain. Sometimes these phenomena may even cross over into the supernatural. Let's go through three of these unexplained phenomena that have been tied to the institution of religion. The first one is stigmata. Stigmata is widely recognized by people of the Christian faith, especially Roman Catholics, and translates to mean single stigma. The stigmata are scars or sores in certain areas of the body, including the wrist, feet, hands, head, and the chest near the heart, which are often associated with the wounds of Jesus Christ sustained during his crucifixion. The Roman Catholics believe it is a sign of union with the suffering of Christ. Anyone with stigmata is called a stigmatic. Stigmatics have attested that doctors have been unable to cure their wounds. Today, there have been about 321 recorded stigmatics, among whom only 62 are males. The first known stigmatic was Saint Francis of Assisi. He had been pondering on Christ's suffering in a cell on Mount Alverno in 1224, when he was reportedly visited by a seraph, who inflicted the five wounds of Christ on his body. There were two marks on his palms, representing the wounds from the nails driven into Christ's palm on the cross. There were also wounds on both his feet and the fifth on his side, where a spear was thrust at Christ. Several people, including Pope Alexander IV, claim to have seen these marks on St. Francis's body. Francis's affiliation with the stigmata led to the establishment of the Order of Franciscans. The second report of the stigmata was in the 14th century. It was a Dominican sister, St. Catherine of Siena. She suffered hysterical epileptic attacks and during one of her episodes, she received her first stigmata at age 23. However, it didn't appear physically until after her death. People believe she felt the suffering of Christ while she was alive. The most popular stigmatic is Padre Pio. He was an Italian priest and saint of the Roman Catholic Church. He became a priest at age 23. Padre Pio received his first stigmata in 1910. On that day, he entered a trance where he claimed to have seen an individual whose hands, side, and feet dripped with blood. When he woke up, his side, feet, and hands were dripping with blood. Unlike Francis and Siena, who only had scars, Padre Pio bled from his scars daily for 50 years. It is speculated that he lost a cup of blood each day. While Siena's scars appeared after death, Padre Pio's completely vanished after his death. People who saw the wounds claimed that the blood smelled like perfume and flowers. He also spent an average of 11 hours every day listening to people's confessions and had the ability to know a man's sins just by reading his soul. Stigmatic is considered the closest human to Christ and is sometimes called a Christ figure. The second religious phenomenon we will examine today is the Holy Grail. The Holy Grail is the mythical cup Jesus drank from during the Last Supper. The Holy Grail is depicted as a chalice that contained Jesus' last drink and is said to possess divine attributes. It is also the same cup used by Joseph of Arimathea to collect blood from Christ's wounds during the crucifixion. However, some people believe this cup is indeed real and is somewhere in existence. Despite this claim, no one has laid hands on the Holy Grail to date. All people have are speculations as to its whereabouts. Some believers of the Holy Grail claim that it was kept in a secret location that now converts any water poured on the spot into blood. Scientists have debunked this claim, explaining that the reddening of water in certain locations is merely due to red oxide in the soil, and has no spiritual or extraordinary connotation to it. Some tales declare that Joseph of Arimathea took the grail to Glastonbury, England. No one has an answer as to why he did that or where exactly he took it. 
Others claim it was initially kept at Temple Mountain before the Knights Templar seized it and kept it in a secret location. Medieval legend propagates that the Holy Grail has the power to heal wounds and grant eternal happiness. While several researchers have searched for the Holy Grail, only a few had given answers. Even though these answers haven't been ascertained either. Medieval history lecturer Margarita Torres and art historian Jose Miguel claim to have conducted a three-year investigation that led them to conclude that the Holy Grail is inside the Basilica of San Isidoro in Leon, Spain. They believe it was passed down from hand to hand until it ended up in the hands of an emir of a Spanish Islamic kingdom, who in turn gave it to King Ferdinand of Spain as a gift for helping Egypt during a famine in the 1950s. The Holy Grail has allegedly remained in the basement of the museum ever since. Finally, we have the Shroud of Turin. The Shroud of Turin is also called the Holy Shroud. It is a piece of linen material believed to be the garment in which Jesus Christ's body was wrapped in after death. Unlike the Holy Grail, the Shroud of Turin does exist, although there are questions about its authenticity. The Shroud currently lies in the chapel of San Giovanni Battista in Turin, Italy, where it has been preserved since 1578. The Shroud is a piece of clothing of 4.3 meters in length and 1.1 meters wide. It has two blurry images of a 5 foot 7 man. One of the images is spread across half of the shroud, while the other image is imprinted on the other half of the shroud. Like the body was laid on half of the shroud and the other half was doubled over to cover the entire body from head to feet. Even though the images are faint, there are vivid scars on different parts of the body, presumed to be the wounds of Christ sustained during the crucifixion. They include the marks on the head, the bruises on the shoulder, deep cuts on the back, and massive dark stains assumed to be blood. People believe that the image was burned into the linen as a result of divine light emanated from Christ when he rose from the dead. They backed up their claim with the fact that there was no laser to burn such images into a garment during these times. The Shroud of Turin came into light in 1354 when the valiant knight Geoffroy de Charnay presented it to the royals. However, they all kept it from the public until 1389 when it was exhibited for everyone to see. The local bishop of choice immediately debunked the divinity of the shroud and every other claim surrounding it. He said the images were cunningly painted. The local bishop's comment was reportedly backed up by the artist who allegedly painted it. Likewise, the Avignon antipope Clement VII barred the usage of the shroud as an object of worship and gave an alternative that it could be exhibited as an image or representation of the true shroud. However, he never explicitly commented on the authenticity of the Shroud of Turin. Later in 1453, Geoffroy de Charnay's daughter gifted the shroud to the royal house of Savoy in Chambéry, where it survived an accidental fire in 1532. It was then moved to Savoyard, Turin in 1578. It has since been preserved privately in the Chapel of the Holy Shroud in Turin. The Chapel of Holy Shroud, or the Chapel of San Giovanni Battista in Turin, is an architectural masterpiece, completed in 1668 specially to house the shroud. Since then, the shroud has been displayed publicly on a few occasions, like the 400th anniversary of its presence in Turin and the marriage ceremony of the Prince of Umberto in 1931. The shroud has had some close brushes with accidents that could have completely destroyed it. The first one was the fire at the Royal House of Savoy. The second one was on the night of April 11, 1997. On that night, a fire outbreak occurred at the Chapel of the Holy Shroud. The fire was further compounded because of the wooden scaffolding in the chapel following recent renovations at the time. The chapel was greatly destroyed, but the shroud was rescued unscathed from a bulletproof case that housed it. 
Later, in 1998 and 2000, Pope John Paul II instructed that the shroud be publicly displayed on both occasions. Unlike several other religious leaders, who dismissed the authenticity of the shroud, Pope John Paul II described it as a mirror of the gospel. Following the fire outbreak at the chapel, they could not find the actual cause despite the intensive investigation. Due to delays from different quarters, the repairs in the chapel took 21 years to complete. The repairs were completed in 2018 and the chapel was reopened on the 27th of September after a total of 30 million euros were spent. The Shroud of Turin is now returned to the chapel where people can view it. To date, science has not been able to provide a definite explanation for these mysteries and their actual existence. So the power of the institution of religion and people's unshaken faith remains the only answer to the sudden scars on people's bodies, a cup that reportedly cures and provides infinite happiness, and the images of a man burned on a garment with mysterious origins from millennia ago. Thank you for watching and we hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Likewise, turn on notifications so you never miss a video.